All right, welcome to Milking the Franchise, the Cash Cow Chronicles. That's right. Where me and Chris watch movies. I tried to make that uh, too spooky. That was a little too Yeah, it got kind of haunted there. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, it's ghostly. Um, well, this would just be a cow pun, but Tanner Tanner went off script, and I loved it. I'm I'm about two weeks too early for all the. It, next month we're gonna do spooky moves only. We got to in October. Um, there's a, I mean, there's a bunch of franchises. We'll find something. Oh yeah, oh yeah. No, I'm. I said spooky moves, but yeah, we got to do a spooky. Oh, movie. okay, okay. We got to do a spooky franchise. Um. Well, how the heck are you, Chris? Oh, Tanner, I'm doing great. Um, yeah? It's been, been a nice week. Um, I was Good. telling you off mic a little bit. We did like a, I went to a, this place called San Geronimo this weekend, which is like outside of Medellin with some friends. And uh, yeah, uh, stayed at like a Airbnb and it was really nice and beautiful. It was great. It's a nice weekend. So how are you doing? Good. Oh, yeah. good. It's a, It's been a busy week for me at work, just um a long stretch of of shows at the the music venue that i work at so been kind of busy but Sorry. um it should even out soon yeah um still enough time to watch highlander 3 luckily thank goodness i know <laughs> <laughs> what a movie um what a film what a film yeah this has given me this franchise has been a blessing and i'm glad i'm catching up on um something that i you know, I love the first one, and I'm glad I'm seeing what how this pans out. And I'm um, so happy to learn about this franchise because <laughs> I had never seen any of them, even the first one. Oh, I love, I love that. That could just be yeah. the the new path of of the franchise or of the podcast. Just only doing things what the other person has no knowledge of. You know what I mean? Going and watching them blind. Movie. Yeah, I like it. I don't know. Um, I take it back. Well, uh, today we watched Highlander 3, The Sorcerer, also known as Highlander, The Final Dimension. Mm -hmm. Um, We'll talk about those names soon. But before we do that, unless you have anything else you want to talk to me about, we're going to talk about last week's movie, do a little recap. Oh, yes, please. Give me some of that. Okay. Uh, Last week, we watched Highlander 2, The Quickening, um, a movie with several different versions that's been re-edited and re-released and it's a total mess none of which um, made any sense yeah. none of which none made, of any sense. made any sense <laughs> it changed the lore changed the rules um in several different ways and this movie seems like they completely abandoned that as well they um did. yeah so chris i got some big news for you here I, i'm so got, excited buddy? to tell you Guess how many responses we have to the survey. Whoa, 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 whoa. Is it more than two? Yeah. <laughs> whoa. Shut your butt. Take your butt and shut it. How many responses did we get? It's, I can't shut it. It's, it's uh, the window to my soul. Uh-huh. <laughs> did we get uh, three responses? No. Guess again. More? More. Whoa, dude. Chris, I reached out. If you're listening out there, which, you know, we didn't really gain any listeners, even though I tried to promote it a little bit, but uh-huh. we did gain 11 responses. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I know. I'm really pretty impressed by that. I know, right? Um, yeah. We've well, been doing this little show for a couple of months, and this is the first time anyone besides Tanner or I has filled <laughs> one of these things out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I took, I took to Reddit. Um, shout out the Highlander subreddit, and okay. it didn't get a lot of. It wasn't like, oh, this is amazing. I got no responses. In fact, uh, like okay. comments, I should say. Um, but nine other people besides us did take the survey. So if you're listening, thank you. And I'm about to read. Go in blind. I haven't read any of these responses. Incredible. Um, okay. Yeah. So. You know, maybe uh, they'll hear their response now, and uh-huh. then they'll become a fan. They're like, "Oh, that was fun hearing my my joke on the on the pod." You know, yeah, it's like Reddit, but you get to listen to Tanner at the same time. It's like me just you know? dictating Reddit out loud. 
Tanner reads Reddit, our next show. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, let's get into that. Um, Highlander to the quickening survey. Um, let's see. Oh, I don't even know where to begin. We'll just go with the whatever wins, I guess. Yeah. Um, so, so I asked, will say, viewers, yes. we're watching this. Tanner puts out these Google forms. Normally, it's just two colors. One for the thing I picked and one for the thing Tanner picked. <laughs> or if we pick uh, the same thing, <laughs> it's just 100% of the vote went to this. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is exciting. There's actual pie charts this week. Oh, that's exciting. Um, yeah. So, favorite line of the movie. We've got a tie between... Um, Let's see. Most people have a full measure of life. And most people just watch it slowly drip away. Um, But if you can summon it all up at one time, in one place, you can accomplish something glorious. And then... Okay, the other one... I'm not going to read these both. But the other one was the line about the rules. Let me get this straight. You come from (laughs) another planet. You're mortal there, but you're mortal here. And um, Anyways, those were the two favorite lines. Great. Wow. Amazing. Look at all that pie. Um, <clears throat> then the next question, we got most baffling changes in the Highlander rules. We've got the winner was they are aliens from the planet Zeist. Eight so, out of 11 votes. Yeah. An insane change to the to the rules of these movies. Just made them aliens for no reason. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. Although in your in your version, they weren't aliens, were they? That's true. That's true. Yeah. I don't know what they were. They were just unstuck from time. Yeah, nothing made sense in my version. Time Uh, travelers. uh, Uh, Favorite quickening. We've got a tie between the the guy getting run over by the train and the katana fight at the end. Oh, nice. Um, What did they spend $34 million on? (laughs) Um, The winner here was giant fans with four votes. (laughs) Uh, re-edits was a close second. Uh, the go. Giant fans made an appearance in this movie, which we'll talk about later, but I was happy to see them, uh, you know, assert themselves as a, as a, as a major player in this franchise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do love the, the choices for this. I'll just go over them real quick. We got please Giant fans, re-edits, um, Sean Connery's hairdresser got two votes. Uh, <laughs> wires for the hoverboard scene got two votes. Then there was Sean Connery's Nick- hairdresser was shouted out in the credits. If uh, if you're wondering why we put that in the in the survey, yeah. Um, and then <clears throat> someone's gonna tie that ponytail. I'm not gonna do it. You, you know, yeah. Um, and then we had aging makeup from Greg Cannon, who was mm-hmm. shouted out as well. And then soundtrack from the Lou Graham band. Um. I sent you something about Lou Graham. We were giving him a bunch of shit this last week because I thought it was just some rando, but apparently that's the the front man for Foreigner. He's like a pretty famous musician. So, a bit, you know, it's not Queen, but the front man for Foreigner, that's still yep. a pretty big, uh, pretty, pretty big musician for a movie like this. Foreigner's had a ton of big hits, right? Yeah, man. I can't think of any right now, but it feels uh, like the first did... time. That's That's the only one I can think of. There you go. Did they do double vision? I feel like they did double vision. Could be. Okay. Anyway. Um, and then the next question here is basically a play on how confusing and convoluted the plot is and how every time or a few times in the movie when they try to explain something crazy, McLeod just said something like that, <laughs> um, which it got 100% of the vote. <laughs> something like that. It's something like that. Something like that. Okay, here we go. This is this is where we make our money here, Chris. Um, we got the um, the prompts here. So, what song would play on bagpipes during your biggest moment in life? So, there was what was the song in this scene? Uh, it was Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace was playing mm-hmm. at, on the bagpipes as Sean Connery was saving the day. Um, and then we got. I'll just read them all. Princes of the Universe, Disco right. Inferno, um, Nelly the Elephant, <laughs> uh, the Benny Hill theme. Don't don't fear I'm the trying, Reaper. I'm trying to play the Benny Hill theme in my head and yeah, bagpipes. 
and I <laughs> don't know if I could do it. Anyway, continue. It's too fast, right? It's, bagpipes yeah. are like they. I don't know if you can play a bagpipe fast. Oh, man, now I want to hear somebody try the Benny Hill theme on bagpipes. We'll look that up after the show. Anyway, continue. It's, uh, it's got to be there. <laughs> don't fear the Reaper, of course. <laughs> Good. Um, <laughs> Copperhead Road. I'm not sure what that is. I don't know that one. Uh, we got Bonnie Portmore, which I, w- I would have no idea, except for I did notice that that song was on the soundtrack for Highlander 3 that we just watched. Oh, and okay. I think it's that slow kind of ballady song that they played in there. It sounded like a Scottish. Oh, that one over the montage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bonnie Portmore. It sounds um, like the people who filled this out like know this franchise because there's a Queen song there, too. You know what I mean? I mean? <laughs> these are people that still hang out on the Reddit, the Highlander Reddit. Um, right. All these years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to the Highlander Reddit. Um, so, true fans, of course. Yeah. Let's see. The next one we got Amazing Grace. Uh, a little on was, the nose there. Was the song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Live in La Vida Loca. Loco. Mm-hmm. Great choice. And then Nookie mm-hmm. and, and Break Stuff. <laughs> from Limp Biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next question is, what is it that dark-haired ladies are known to do? There's a little line that uh, Sean Connery whispered to a woman on a plane, and it kind of cut out um, something about what dark-haired ladies do. Let's find out. Mm-hmm. Um, what, are they, what are they known to do? Study hard and get good grades. Be successful boss bitches. Play the skin flute. Uh, <laughs> be Wonder Woman. Uh, sit on men's it's faces. Actually accurate. Sit on okay. men's faces. It's in the subtitles. And I did see this, that in the subtitles, it says sit on men's faces during that part. It did um, it really? Okay. Even though it doesn't say that, I don't even think he like murmurs anything. Could be wrong. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> shit on men's faces. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get here. What's yeah, that? I'm also reading how they spelled faces there. And it, is that supposed to be a Sean Connery accent? How they spelled faces? Faces? Shit on men's faces. Faces. Yeah. Faces. Uh, oral sex. Mm-hmm. Everything. We got more sit on men's faces. Mm-hmm. Giggle while Sean Connery makes a suggestive remark in their ear. I like that one. That one uh, might be my favorite. <laughs> Dex and alleyways. Uh, they are so horny for immortals. Mm-hmm. They're notorious. <laughs> Everyone knows that. Yeah. Everyone knows it. They like a man who doesn't die. Um, and last question here we got, what does the S.H.I.E.L.D. Corporation do to make money? Um, some answers we got. Harvest ozone and sell it. Sell T-shirts and other Shield swag. Mm-hmm. Uh, eBay. <laughs> Tax the what entire do they, world. Do they, sell, what, do they sell the ozone on eBay? Or am I connecting two different answers? I think there? they okay. just—it's a big hub where like all the items from eBay come, and then they sell it from the hub. Okay. Remember those? We'll sell your stuff on eBay stores. But, I do remember that. So the shield is just a big one of those. I think so. <laughs> okay, Amazon great. On warehouse. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tax the entire world for shield protection, and honestly, that's probably the the real answer. That, right it's there. probably the best answer. Yeah, I think that might have been the actual plot. Um, charge every person and company on Earth for the shield protection. Oh, that's the same thing. Mm-hmm. They shield us. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> how dare we ask that question tanner how dare we uh flip switch and turn dials mm-hmm. i saw that in the movie with my eyes <laughs> that's just a fact um mm-hmm. charge for protecting the earth another one of those protecting the world uh, um i guess but that's not really making money just protecting the world we wanted specifically like taxing everybody for that service What's their business model is what we wanted on this question. I think it's, yeah. you're right, tax money or something. People are, like, paying to keep this going. Um, yeah. 
Protect the world from death by solar radiation for a low monthly price. Oh, mm-hmm. so it's like subscription based. Um, <laughs> what's that? Oh, I was just going to say, they got that part of the future right in this movie. Everything's subscription now. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> they called it. Um, deploy the Avengers because of S.H.I.E.L.D. Mm. Nice. Mm. Mm-hmm. And then broadcast advertisements on the S.H.I.E.L.D. Eat ads, sucker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? Eat ads, sucker? No, no, um, no. You just have to watch ads. I think that one was mine. I like it. Yeah. Well, there you go. There that is was your fun. 11 response. I know. It's so much more fun to have all these new responses. And yeah. a lot of them did a great job. Yeah. Some Thanks people took for... it very seriously, but some people were in on the joke here. Mm-hmm. Love it. Thanks again. Yeah. Thanks for playing along, guys. It's a real treat um, for us. Yeah, that's awesome. I mm-hmm. will probably release it again. I didn't get any don't come here, don't come back. So I'll probably put this Highlander 3 uh, survey on there as well. <laughs> Great. So if you want to hear your stuff every week, you know, you can. You can keep submitting, and I'll read it next time as well. Um, all right. 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 What, uh, what are we doing here? Are we going to talk about Highlander 3 now? Let's talk about Highlander 3. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Set aside the Shield Corporation. Yeah. And let's go for, Japan. Forget everything you know from watching <laughs> Highlander 2. Yep. Just pretend like all that didn't happen. That was a mistake. Um, yeah. No, they clearly they, they seem to pretty clearly think that. There's like high, there's flashbacks from the first movie, but not the second movie in the first five minutes of this movie. Oh yeah. No, it's a yeah. complete a complete abandonment for sure. Yeah. Um all right, so this movie came out in nineteen ninety four. Um, okay. and it was directed by Andy Morahan. Morahan. Um, so a new director going a different way. Still has Christopher Lambert in it. Um, yep. and it has two titles: The Sorcerer and The Final Dimension. Um, I, were they different? Did you look that up at all? Because I watched the I Final couldn't... Dimension version. I couldn't find any difference. No, I think it's just the okay. title change. Just the title change. Um, okay. There is a PG-13 version and an R version, though. Um, and I, I must have watched the R-rated version because there was a pretty uh, spicy sex scene in it. There was Bush in mine, so I'm sure yeah. it's R. Yeah, yeah there's no way. It got pretty Bush soft core. Although I could see, I mean, it wasn't like a violent. The beheadings were kind of bloodless. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I do know what you mean. Um, yeah. Where should we begin here, Chris? Do you want to begin Man. in uh, ancient uh, Japan? Mago Japan or Mako Japan. I don't know how to say it, but yes, let's begin there. Take uh, it away. Great. So this, uh, this one starts kind of after... Well, man, it's hard to put these on timelines. It, it starts after the start of the first movie. So Highlander kind of knows he's immortal and he travels to Japan to train with, uh, like, um, I didn't write his name down, but uh, to train with, oh. like, a, a samurai master. Um, and um, the samurai master warns him about uh, this character named Kane, who is immortal. Um, and Kane has killed a bunch of other immortal characters and is becoming uh, too strong. And uh, he's, he's worried Kane is going to, you know, he's, he's going to become so strong that he's going to be uh, unbeatable in a fight and uh, he's going to end up killing all of the other immortals. Um, it looks like Kane, his name is Nakano. 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 Thank you. Okay, yep. great. Yep. Um, and uh, I, had a, I have a conspiracy theory here. Okay. Because we meet Kane. Kane is played by uh, Mario Van Peoples. And Jake we him, talked about Jake himself. Uh huh. We talked about him like two weeks ago when we did, or not two weeks ago, like three weeks ago though, when we did Jaws four because he's he plays a major part in Jaws four. Yeah. Um, and uh, there's this one scene at the end of Jaws four where he is eaten by a shark and then he doesn't die. He like re the shark gets blown up and he's just fine and survives the movie even after being eaten by a shark. I think Jaws 4 is in the Highlander universe, and that explains oh why Mario Van Peoples didn't die in that movie. I it's love the that. only thing. <laughs> he's Kane. Also, he's like, 
yeah. And he's playing, he's playing it low key. He's undercover. That's why he has that terrible, like Jamaican Patois accent. Um, yeah. That's my conspiracy theory for today. What do you think? Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. I it just, it all I fell mean, into place while I was watching this. I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> um anyway so uh yeah well, also yeah. what's with mario van peebles just playing any old any race like he's playing like a mongolian or whatever what what was he supposed to be supposed to be japanese kane i have no idea he had i mean he had that big scorpion tattoo on his chest i feel like he and was supposed to be Volta. like genghis khan like mongolian just like by the way he was dressed uh um, that could be but uh Either way, he's playing like an Asian man now. And before he, I mean, I don't know. It's, it seems to, in both movies be uh, not well cast. <laughs> uh, he was intimidating in this movie. He had some scenes. Um, That's true. He was better in this one for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that whole character, you weren't, that whole movie, Jaws 4, you're not coming out of that looking good. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we're in, uh, we're in like feudal Japan, um, and the Highlander is getting advice and a sword, I think, right. He gets that samurai sword from Nakano, this, uh, yeah, kind of like, it's like a blacksmithing scene. Yeah. He's kind of like a magical, I don't know. He's like the, the guy in karate kid or in three ninjas, you know, the magical Asian, yeah, like karate mystical, master mystical. character. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, and let's see. Did you have anything from that scene? Oh, just uh, just that he's training with him, and he's like a he's like a sorcerer kind of thing. He like has yeah. the art of illusion. Um, at one point they're training, and his his wooden stick turns into a snake. Um, yeah, pretty good graphics on that. Pretty cool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> fight with your spirit and the sword will follow that's one of the lines mm-hmm. um, he cuts a melon that's on his head but he doesn't cut his head it was a very and then at some point he like asks Highlander to kill him right but he won't yes. do it he won't do it yeah yeah. Um, and then did he, he want fu- to give him? Did he do that because he wanted to give Highlander his skills? He wanted to give him his quickening. Was that the yeah. idea there? Okay. Yeah, because he didn't want Kane to have it. Right. That so makes he sense. wanted him to have the power of illusion, which I guess you know that introduces the fact that there's there's other types of Highlanders with other powers, and you can absorb mm-hmm. the powers, and then you have access to those powers. Um, and it makes me wonder if there's other other immortals that have other types of powers. You know what I mean? I do know um, what you mean. Or if that's where they were going with it. Yeah. Yeah. So he sends, he trains with him for however long. And then Kane shows up in this cave and they send, he sends Highlander away, says you can still escape. And he fights Kane. Um, what's his name? Nakano does. And there's a battle and he gets his head chopped off by Kane. Kane absorbs his, he quickens him. Um, it was his head after being disconnected from his body talks. That's a new addition to the <laughs> Highlander franchise. It sure is, yeah. Uh, a nice touch, I might add. Uh, but before uh, before uh, Na- uh, Nakano gets killed, uh, Highlander pops back in. He didn't actually run away. He stayed there to like help him fight. Yeah. Um, or at least that happened. I, I think same version. Yeah. Talking same version, today? yeah. I think okay, we're cool. All the same, yeah. Okay, great. Uh, that was so confusing last week. By the way, I'm glad we well, can talk then about he, the same. He movie. does actually run away <laughs> at some point, though. He escapes, yeah, because the 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 Nakano guy has rigged up this cave that he's been helping Highlander train in. Uh, to, he's like booby trapped it. He pulled like a like a Home Alone, and uh, as soon as the quickening happens, when he gets his head cut off, um, like the whole cave collapses around Kane. Right. Um, and uh, the guys that are there with him. Um, and uh, the Highlander is able to just barely escape, but Kane is trapped inside. Um, and he's stuck there for 400 years. Yep. In yep. a cave, just hanging out with his two buddies. Yeah, Both what do you think which... they did for 400? Go ahead. Oh, God, it must have been so boring. 
Yeah. Um, I'm surprised they didn't cut off their heads because as soon as they escaped uh, in the next scene, he, (laughs) a lot of thumb wars. As soon as he escapes, he cuts off his, one of his buddy's head. I like noticed that. that he didn't even like that dude had been trapped in for four hundred years, <laughs> yeah. and he didn't even like let him see the sunlight. I know. And, and the other guy, he's fine with. Re- the other guy's like fine with uh, like go off and find the Highlander for for me, but it's mine to yeah. take. Like yeah. who is this fucking guy? <laughs> who do you think you are? Um, yeah. So in the future, in modern Japan, classic band peoples, Tanner. Classic band peoples, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's he's sort of a menacing villain, you know. He's got a great yeah. way of talking. Um, and uh, in the future, J- modern day Japan, it cuts to a um, American woman named Alex Johnson, um, Doctor Johnson, and she's there studying this cave, and they're digging into this cave because it's I d- I don't even know why, honestly. There's some kind of legend. Um, the legend of the sorcerer, I guess. Not yeah. that they, they know what's in there, but and uh, he, he so Nakano must be the sorcerer in the tunnel, yes. right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So they're looking for this sorcerer's cave. I think is is the has got to be it. Which just before I forget, I I don't okay the fine if it's called the final dimension or they change it to that. What does that mean? The final dimension in context of this movie? Because the sorcerer oh, is obvious. It's like oh, there's there's sorcery there's a couple sorcerers involved in in the story that makes sense but what is the final dimension that's a fan, that's a great question i have no idea it makes no sense why they yeah. change it it doesn't right because they don't travel between dimensions they don't do anything with like two there's dimensional no... or four dimensional or anything like that you're right there's it's no, just no it's just normal dimensions mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> okay anyway <laughs> it's a great question <laughs> i did not even thought about it uh yeah so you got a a new blonde chick and um there's always a new blonde chick here in mm-hmm. these franchises or in these movies um and she's a scientist and they're digging here um and then while like while they're digging they don't actually get into the cave they're like next to the cave but they're like they missed it or something right but then they just burst out of the cave themselves finally Yep. Did I get that right? Yeah, yeah. Like, there's a guy investigating because it's making weird noises, and yeah. then they like Kool Aid Man through the wall and kill him. What took him so long? I don't I know. Mean, they they must have dug that entire corridor. You know, it probably took him months, and then all of a sudden they just they come out right at that moment. Also, God, just the rules don't make any sense because <laughs> hit me with them. <laughs> I'm already well because. Highlander, I guess he was immortal this entire time. Um, he never did start the aging process mm-hmm. because, but then there's like a, a lightning storm or something right when these guys escape, and it's yeah he like he like, like oh, feels they're back, he yeah knows they're back, yeah. But they weren't gone ever. They were just like buried. They just couldn't get out. Right? They were mm-hmm. never like actually dead or gone or dormant at all. They were just like trapped in a room <laughs> anyway yeah they were just uh, inside they're just inside that's all <laughs> yeah yeah okay so yeah they they escape and what happens where am i here oh he cuts no, off his buddy's great. head he for, cuts off uh, his buddy's head for yeah. no reason but uh no reason. he gets the well i guess he wanted you know there can be only one that's all the reason you need um and mcleod feels they say, it. he's in oh he feels the quickening yeah yeah they say after every death, there can only be one in this movie. Like yeah, I, I'm kind of sick of them saying it at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of the brand, Tanner. Got to stay loyal to the brand. True. Uh, yeah, McLeod feels it, and it cuts to him, and he's like in the middle of the desert, and he has a son. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know. I thought it was a funny life for him to choose, like just hanging out in the sand with, uh, with his boy. Um, but he feels it and he leaves his son uh, to go to New York to, uh, to fight other immortals. Cause he knows that the, you know, there's a battle coming and he doesn't want his kid to get killed. Um, they, did, they did reveal here though, that it's not his real son. He's just been acting as his dad this whole time. Mm-hmm. So like a, an adopted son sort of a I situation. I don't know how yeah. he met him or how that all happened, but 
that's what happens. Wouldn't it be weird to have your dad be immortal and then you just gradually got older than him? Yeah. That's kind of the, that's the life he's chosen for this kid. <laughs> Very strange, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, so uh, McLeod arrives in New York and he's walking down a darkened alley and he gets jumped by some thugs. Um, he resists and they shoot him and he gets sent to the hospital. But by the time he reaches the hospital, all of his wounds have healed. Um, and when they start investigating or like, like looking into what's wrong with him, he resists and they send him to Ward 7, which is like the insane asylum, like the psych ward. The loony um, bin. And the loony bin, exactly right. Um, and once he's in uh, Ward 7, they put him in restraints. And I really thought they were going to do more with that. You know, him being tied up makes him a, a real easy target for a decapitation, you know? Yeah. I mean, that, uh, whole, but- that whole scene made no sense. He mm-hmm. comes in on the stretcher. It's like, um, you know, he's going to the ER emergency room and, you know, all the doctors are there. And then he's like, he kind of gets up and is like, no, let go of me, let go of me. And they immediately assume that he's like mentally insane instead yes. of like maybe just in shock. And he like doesn't know where he, you know, he gets up and kind of has this adrenaline moment or something. Yeah. Or like, experience, like oh. yeah, experiencing stress from being in the fucking hospital, you know? Yeah. From being stabbed yeah. or whatever. And yeah. they're just like, well, he's insane. Send him to the loony bin instantly and then just leave him there. Don't tend to his wounds or anything. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So. Well, remember, but, at this point, he doesn't have wounds anymore, Tanner. They've all healed themselves. I guess so. But that all happens like while he's laying there. I don't know. It seems like they yeah. want to keep him for testing. Um, yeah. Yeah. But uh, this kind of a lot of cut cutting between different scenes. At one point, I have while he's strapped in the loony bin or the asylum, he um, she finds like a piece of Scottish material at the, mm-hmm. at the inside the cave, right? And immediately yeah, recognizes it. What it <laughs> like where it came from? Maybe yeah, not immediately. It has to be a Scottish tartan or tar- tartan. I think is how you say that. Dude, this girl is obsessed with Scottish patterns and color schemes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She loves Scottish rugs and kilts. Yeah, she's a real kilt chaser. <laughs> it's her kilty pr- pleasure. That's it. That's, that's the one I was looking for. Um, Love that. <laughs> anyway, so he's in the. Um, yeah, you're right. It's kind of jumping over around a little bit. And we also see that one of the immortal guys, uh, it's not Kane, but the other one, right? Because two of them are still alive that escaped from the, the sorcerer's chamber. Uh, yeah. And that other yeah. one is after him. Um, and uh, so he manages to kind of, uh, he, he gets one of the other psych ward patients to undo his restraints and cause a bit of a diversion so he can kind of sneak out. Um, and they end up, in the grossest hospital basement I have ever seen. Like, Oh, it's so weird. Yeah. It's so dingy. It's like, you it's need like to keep this shit clean so people don't get sick. You know? Everywhere and just hanging sheets. And yeah. it's dark and dingy and gross. Yeah, they're air drying all the sheets in this basement. Real gross. Um, but he ends up uh, kind of working his way down there and, uh, and I believe fights that guy down there, right? Yeah, they have a little sword fight. The guy is um, just blindly swiping at blankets. Mm-hmm. Um, he tells somebody to shut up, which just, you know, in the, in the context of the rules in this, this whole world, it's like, he wouldn't know the, the word shut up. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, problem with this movie. I'm, I'm, I'm reading into too much of those kinds of things. <laughs> But uh, like knowing modern language and slang, uh, I don't know about that. Yeah. Um. Anyway, yeah. So they have a little fight here. It's kind of not that exciting, from what I remember. Um. They, there's this one move that he learned from the sensei from uh, N- uh, what's his name again? Nakano. Nakano. Nakano, where he just turns and takes the guy's sword away. Great move, but he uses it here to to vanquish this this other immortal yeah um, yeah and uh at this point uh you know uh kane got a, a third quickening already yeah um half an hour in washing machines are exploding um and they've they've really updated the quickening graphics in this movie 
Yeah. Like it's it's all like CG now. Um and it it's not it's not quite as effective, I would say. It's not quite as exciting. I did like that there were more quick oh, I guess there were only four quickenings, weren't there? Yeah, and the th- first three happened pretty quick. Pretty quick, uh, yeah. And then the other one, only other ones came, but um yeah, I'm still frustrated for the last movie. It's called the quickening, and there were only three quickenings in the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> um but anyway um yeah so we we have this fight in the basement of the hospital um and at some point here uh there's like a scene with um with the highlander in front of a tv and he recognizes this woman uh who's on tv and she's the american scientist that we saw earlier um then there's like a flashback to what where would you put that period i kind of thought it was like revolutionary war 1700s yeah 1700, something like that. Um, but she looks a lot like someone from his past. Um, and so yeah, so much, flashbacks. so much so that it's the same actress. Yeah. And this was very confusing to me. I got excited because I was like, oh, this chick's an immortal too, maybe. I thought and it was a lady immortal, our first yeah, one. I yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. Um, but no. Turns out it was just a, a device used by the director because it, kind of reminded him of this girl but it had no relation to it at all turns out right i kept waiting for some kind of reveal of uh-huh. like oh it is the same girl but then there the the modern girl doesn't recognize him or anything and i was so confused what's the yeah, point they, of any they never tied up that loose end but they made it very clear that she looks like her there's no point in making her like <laughs> look like this girl go in the past because go off well there's just no you know there's no point in making her look like this girl from the past because he keeps falling in love with different blondes every movie or different girls every movie. You know, every like yeah. 20, 30 years, he has a new lover that he loves eternally. And it's like, it, it doesn't, it makes no difference whether she looks like somebody that he used to know or not. It makes no, it makes no difference at all. I'm pissed. Right. I'm fucking mad. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, all all of that flashback stuff was pointless except to maybe show that he's just lived a long time and he likes Sometimes blondes with big heaving like bosoms. He, mm-hmm. he likes blondes with big bosoms. What can mm-hmm. I say? Yeah. Um, I guess that's all I took from these flashbacks. Well, there wasn't much else to take because they're different people. It would have been great if she was also immortal. That would have been I a cool know. way to end this and a cool way to set up the sequel because you kill her in the first act of the sequel and then it's a revenge movie. Um, I really... Yeah. Like, well, that would have been immortal. Cool. Yeah. Would have been, yeah, it would have been way cooler. I didn't even think about um, that. I, I was thinking, like... Yeah, somehow she's, like... She's trying to dig up this guy herself and she's acting like... A, or she is a scientist, but, like, trying to kill Kane herself, you know? And that yeah. they're showing us this history because it's going to be like, oh, wait, when they finally see each other, um, it's going to be like they're in love still, you know, that whole. And maybe he can fall in love with somebody who's also going to live forever and they can live forever together instead of the sad, like, I keep losing the woman I love every 30 years mm-hmm. um, or less with Brenda. Rip. Rest in peace to Brenda, who died in a car crash in, in Scotland <laughs> one year after she fucking met Highlander. Yeah, absolutely. I love that they just wrote her off. They're just like, oh, she was splatted all over the road in Highlander. <laughs> <laughs> and McLeod walked away without a scratch. Uh, anyway. Um, where are we here? I I really had some issues with some of this stuff. No, you're fine, man. Uh, we. <laughs> We get a shot. I thought it was funny. Like you said, they're using there can only be one way too much. Uh, there could be only one. Uh, it was even carved into the rock of the cave. And there's I this know. funny scene of her like it's translating the rock inscription. Uh, there can be only one. What could that mean? Um, that's when and, I realized that it wasn't her. Or that's when I started to get really confused because. Yeah, because it made it out like point? it was her. It like it's so such a confusing plot device. Um, and then uh, we get a, a shot of uh, uh, Martin Van Peoples. Uh, what's his name again? Kane, Mario Van Peoples, excuse me. Uh, Kane showing up in New York, and he's kind of a pervy creep, um, similar to the bad guy in the first one. Um, he's, he's got a huge. About to have sex with a hooker. 
Yeah. He and puts the no, condom because no. he doesn't understand it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I that she was says funny. no glove, no love. Uh-huh. Uh, um, he's got a great scorpion chest tattoo and a terrible haircut. And uh, yeah. yeah so what would you call that haircut? It's like a half bowl cut, but long in the back. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what to call it. It's like pretty good. It's a pretty yeah, it's like a dingy mullet. I don't even know how to describe it. Go look it up. Go look it up. It's one of uh one of Mr. Mario Band people's best looks. Um <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah, let's see. We get uh Alex. Does she, she get followed faxed. by a king? She gets faxed, yes, eventually, but she gets faxed a newspaper clipping from from Highlander, right? To come to New yes. York and see me. Um, and then she's in New York, like, instantly. She does a lot of, like, fast travel in this movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where she just, like, shows up places and there she is. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. Uh, speaking of showing up places, she follows Nash home. So just shows up at his home. Um, and Nash kind of flashes back to some old timey farm fucking from the, from the other version of her from the past. Um, and then Alex interrupts his fantasy and asks how to find McLeod. Cause he's still using his like Nash alias. Um, and then boom, guess who's there? It's Kane. And Is this when get... he comes in as a bird and transforms? Yes, dude. Yes. <laughs> What is happening? He's like a shapeshifter. Yeah. Oh, he's got. I've got a list of all his sorcerer abilities here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. He can. Yeah. He can. He's a master of illusion, right? That's what they set up. So anything is that from killing the sorcerer that he got those powers? Yeah. yeah, Okay, that makes a lot more sense. I'm glad we're talking about this. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Um, My favorite part of this scene, though. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh well, I wasn't sure if you were going to talk about the the kilt patterns in the computer system she's obsessed uh, no, with she's like comparing yeah. just more like comparing patterns on kilts um in the computer that's all yeah which i, I do just think found it was funny because she, she identified it as being a mcleod pattern even though all yeah. of the colors were different <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know like, she's the a lot was... about scotland <laughs> patterns like family patterns Exactly. Exactly. Um, if you, Tanner, if your family had a kilt pattern, what would it look like? Save it for the survey, my friend. Save it. Save it for the survey. There we go. Um, um, I was going to say, there's a, a scene here with like a cadaver. The dead, the dead guy got his head chopped off in the laundry room. They're like looking at it. The cops are looking at it, um, and there's there's several jokes from the cops about. Like, oh, I guess I found the the cause of death here. Like, when they find, like, a, a head on the ground next to it. And they're like, I think we know the cause of death. I don't I just thought that was funny. <laughs> Several times they make those jokes about a beheaded person. Yeah, um, it's kind of fucked up. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so he, but, he shows I mean, I up. When you're, when you're dealing with decapitated people, you got to find your moments of levity, you know? That's a good point. I like yeah. that perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So he he shows up at this uh, at her place of work. Is that where she is? Um, as a magic bird and intimidates her, right? I thought this was McLeod's apartment. Oh, that but maybe that could it is be her place of work. I'm I wasn't quite sure of the location for this fight, but all three of them are there. We've got Alex and McLeod, and then a uh, uh, Kane shows up as well. And as a bird, like you said, because he has sorcerer abilities. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have a sword fight, um, which turns into a trapeze sword fight. And it was maybe my favorite moment of the whole movie, them just swinging back and forth, getting one swing at each other, and then swinging back. Uh, and they did it like two or three times before Kane finally chops the rope that, uh, that McLeod is swinging on. Um, and then McLeod is about to get killed. He gets stabbed in the chest and then he's about to get decapitated by Cain. Uh, but when he swings, the sword breaks 
and there's a bunch of like Buddhist stuff. So are they on holy ground? Like where I, this is again, like I'm just, un, I'm just unclear where this is. Well, they did mention right before they started fighting that he's like, this is holy ground. You can't fight here. And then he says, I'll be the judge of that. So yeah. Kane, Kane breaks the rule, which I guess is just an agreed upon rule. It's not like a, it's not like a, if they physically can't do it, it's just like mm-hmm. it's kind of an agreed upon rule by the immortals. Which is a pretty flimsy rule if you got a bad immortal out there. I mean, I you know why would but the Kurgan the ever do that? Seemed, yeah, but then at the end it seemed like the that he couldn't kill McLeod because of the the Buddhist stuff. Like there there was like a wind that swept through and kind of like stopped him from killing him. Right? Am I wrong Buddhist, about that? A Buddhist wind. I, a Buddhist <laughs> wind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It. I mean, it's very. Very loose on the rules here. Um, yeah. But, maybe I mean, he other... can only fight him on holy ground, but he can't kill him. He... Maybe that's it. But then my yeah. other problem with this scene is like he defends himself and it, it made it, it, it seemed to me like it was holy ground. So he wasn't able to kill him, but it wasn't, it wasn't Kane's sword that broke. It was Highlander's sword, which would yeah. seem to make him even easier to kill. Like now he's defenseless. You could chop off his head super easy. Yeah, he's he, like he, he instead he, says like yeah after four 400 years patience is a virtue he says and then turns into yeah. a bird and, and leaves and yeah everything I is like exploding he, i think i think it's because it's holy ground actually that maybe he yeah he didn't kill him right there um i don't know and that's why everything is exploding because they're like fighting on holy ground perhaps maybe. and that's like causing okay. a disruption in the the quickening chi i have no idea in the highlander <laughs> rules as soon as yeah. the rules are broken a, it's a uh, disruption yeah. in the, the plot <laughs> yeah <clears throat> um yeah i don't know he's so when he breaks into this he's very um he's very uh what am i trying to say intense there's a there's a, a couple moments here where he's talking about Hanky panky and uh, illusion and reality and hocus pocus. Do you remember that? I do remember that. Yeah. And then it's she. She is saved by a fax machine going off. It seemed like, which I thought <laughs> was pretty funny. Um. Yeah. Anyways, throughout this scene, though, Alex saw the whole thing, so she is kind of like super suspicious at this point. You know, like. Guy got right. stabbed in the chest and he's fine. Like, what's going on here? I need to go do some more research on kilts. And so um, while she's doing that, we get another flashback to medieval times. And again, you're totally right. Because there's no connection between those two characters played by that same actress, like, these flashbacks are pointless. <laughs> I was still holding out hope until almost... Until they actually confronted each other and talked... I was still holding out hope that maybe she was immortal and maybe forgot or something. Um, you know what I mean? Like had forgotten yeah. him. Yeah, like an amnesia so thing or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just didn't recognize him because it had been 400 years or something. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, but then it shows him in the past as banging. Just an excuse to have another sex scene in the movie, I think. Um, also, she gives him the only connection from the past. Give to the... Give the people what they want, you know, Tanner? Exactly. <laughs> uh, this girl is very attractive, though. I will say, Deborah. Uh, she's Unger. a pretty lady. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, so, what am I trying to say? She gives him in the past, or her character in the past gives him um, this little piece of jewelry, which he later gives to her in the present. And I don't that, like that's the only kind of connection between the two that I can see. Um, okay. It still, it still makes no sense. There's no point to even have that plot line in there. Cut it all mm-hmm. off. The other, okay, the only other, another confusing thing, not the only other, um, <laughs> is that they make a mention in the scene of Connor McLeod um, being the previous owner of the antique store or the apartment or something before Nash took over, which contradicts a lot of the rules or the entire plot of the first movie where... I mean, he hasn't been named Connor McLeod in 300 years, you know? He's, mm-hmm. yeah. 
I don't know. It, they, what, they mentioned they make the whole. I was, plot. I was thinking about this actually this last week. From can I can I talk about two for a second? Because two, he yeah, was, yeah, 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 yeah. He was partially responsible for creating the shield for Shield Corp. Right. Did he do that? Did he do that as as Nash or did he do that as McCloud? So I thought he did it as McCloud. I feel like in that movie he's like out in the open about being an immortal, and that people know that he's. Yeah, he's like not he's keeping like a, a low superhero. profile at all. And then they make him, I don't know. Anyway, that was my 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 one complaint. The my movie is complaint. completely yeah. just just they they completely abandoned it is what they've done with this third yeah. one. Yeah. Second movie didn't happen. None of that oh, that was all a mistake. Yeah. Um Sorry anyway, for getting the, us off track there. I wanted no, to No, that's that right. The, I was thinking about the, it today. Yeah. The full uh the whole plot of the first movie, or not plot, but is they made a huge point of saying that he like takes over dead babies' names, you know, every like forty, fifty years. Yep. And then well anyway, so then what's then they made Connor McCloud the previous owner of this place, which doesn't make any sense. Anyways, now <laughs> I'm getting off track. Uh well let me bring you back on track here. Uh okay. we get another flashback and then uh through all this, McLeod decides he's going to go to Scotland and connect with his roots. Um, meanwhile, Alex is doing some research on what looks like to like Encarta, like the, the, the CD version of Wikipedia from 1992. She's like oh, yeah. doing some research on Scotland. <laughs> the Scotland uh, historical data CD-ROM. Yeah, exactly data. right. It's a great CD-ROM. Uh, 10 out of 10 would recommend. Um, yeah. And then uh, she ends up following him to Scotland, but not before we get just this ridiculous training montage. Uh, it's mostly just Highlander swinging a sword in pretty places while they do helicopter shots past him. Chris, where, right? where is your favorite place to swing your sword and practice swinging? <laughs> is it on a mountaintop? Save, save it for the survey, baby. Um, okay. Probably on a mountaintop, yeah. I mean, you gotta you gotta be listening to eagles going, and you gotta <laughs> you know there's gotta be wind in your hair from all directions. So, if those yeah. criteria are met, uh, give me a sword, and I'm gonna be swinging all day. And you gotta be listening to the song uh, Bonnie Portmore. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, shout out to our survey participant who knew the name of that song. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that the training montage is crazy. He like, he goes. Yeah, he goes to Scotland. She shows up randomly again. At just like, <laughs> why did she follow him there? How would she know where he was going to be? And he's like, I knew you'd find me here. But like, oh. it kept cutting back and forth to her and him while he's making the sword, and she's like in New York still. And then all of a sudden, she just shows up in Scotland while he's still making the sword. You uh -huh. know. I don't know how maybe it takes longer to make a sword than I than I might think. Um and did she track him down based on the I think based on the pattern of his kilt. That's where she was able to find out exactly where he's going to be based on Dude, the there's some pattern. good stuff on that Scottish CD ROM <laughs> like we were saying. <laughs> um also, oh my god. Okay, so this entire forge was just there for like 400 years. They had the anvil, the the sharpening yep. wheel. All of his tools were buried in a, a hole. Um, it's just like it li he literally had an entire forge ready to go. Yeah. So he could spend all his time making a new sword. <laughs> <laughs> um, and just she's finding it. out. Oh, there's like a little piece of metal with a Japanese symbol on it. And she has another CD-ROM of Japanese symbols. Um, and it turns out of it's the Jap Japanese... Japanese pieces of metal, the Japanese piece <laughs> of metal CD ROM. <laughs> um, and it finds out it's the Japanese symbol for knowledge, which means nothing. But uh, then she brings that to him, and that's the the piece of metal, a little like brick of metal that he uses to forge the sword out of. Right. So mm -hmm. now he's got a true like Japanese. Uh, Sword. Samurai katana sword. Yeah. samurai right. sword yeah yep 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 um and then oh god some of the craziest parts of there it. was okay what else happens yes. in this scene yeah there, there's also a scene that they're kind of cutting between of what kane is up to and at this point kane has found his apartment in new york city 
and he goes in there, uh, steals the big diamond, breaks some things, and he starts listening to the uh, the like the messages on the voicemail and gets a message from uh, from Highlanders, John. the kid from John, John, the kid who Highlander abandoned in Morocco, um, Marrakesh, which I don't you. know where that is. I think it's in Morocco. Okay, there we go. Yeah, there you go. Um, and uh, yeah, so a- after we get, uh, well, first off, we get a, a the the love scene between uh, Alex and McLeod. Um, Is that already? I think so. Mm, that happened pretty no, quick it's... after she showed up in Scotland. Okay, so he's he's in. Yeah, there's an answering machine that. Uh, like the kid calls right at yeah, the time so that this guy is and leaves mm-hmm. a message right when this guy, right when Kane is in his apartment, like stealing cigars and shit. And he's like, Hey dad, um, where are you? Or something. <laughs> um, just in case you forgot, here's my phone number. And he leaves his phone number. <laughs> and then, mm-hmm. So Kane, I guess sets up a meeting, which you find out a little bit later um, for the son to like fly solo across the, across the, it's the world. Uh, world to yeah. to come to New York, um, and he says like, "Daddy, daddy." <laughs> um, but the craziest part to me, maybe this whole movie is in this scene where you see on McLeod's desk in his office that he has a autographed headshot of his son on his desk. <laughs> It's like a black and white <laughs> professional Hollywood headshot. Yeah. <laughs> this and kid, it's and it's like got like writing on it but with like Sharpie. Like, hey, dad, love you. Signed, yeah. son. Signed, son. Signed to your son. Yeah. Oh, let's. It's okay. Amazing. There's a there's a question. What is the head? What is the kid's message on the headshot? I love um, it. I love it already. Okay. Um. Isn't that uh, crazy though? Who has an autographed picture of their kid? <laughs> like an autograph. I hadn't thought about how weird it was that it was autographed. Yeah, it's it makes it so much better. And it's like a headshot. It's like a professional. Oh, oh boy, it's not like yeah. a picture of the two of them together or anything, or just like of a kid like you know having fun or just like playing. And you took a, a great photo of him. It's literally like a professional shot. It uh, might be the headshot that that actor sent in to apply definitely. for this role. And you know it's like, I this mean? is the only, let's just use that. Cause I don't want to take time to take a picture of him, like doing something <laughs> fun and like develop it and then put it in this frame. Let's just use the headshot but that he but signed but sure, for us. writing on the front of the picture. <laughs> yeah, Because I bet you <laughs> the kid wrote something on there or something like when he submitted his headshot God. and they just straight up used that headshot. That's exactly what happened. Isn't it? I love that so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay um, um i had to get that okay in so there. uh kane has set up this kidnapping plot and i do want to correct one thing you said they decided not to go to new york they're in new jersey uh they're they fly into newark and right. uh right. and uh mcleod finds out that his son is flying to newark and so he races uh from scotland where he's made his new sword and uh boned down with miss alex he races to New oh, York yeah. to try a, and save his son. There's a big sex scene in this one. Big sex scene, yeah. Push, but yeah, oops. yeah. <laughs> That's the triple threat. The three Bs, baby. Three Bs. Mm-hmm. Um, um, yeah. I get the feeling that somewhere in um, Christopher Lam- Lambert, I found out Christopher Lambert's uh, thank you contract is. I must like at, at least <laughs> suckle on one boob in every movie that I'm in, every Highlander sequel. That I'm in. There's like and a boob suckling must be, quota. She must, must be, be blonde. Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it does seem like that. Yeah, um, it sure does. Damn. <laughs> anyways, um, uh, yeah. So you find out that um, Kane can turn into other people and apparently imitate voices or maybe he didn't even imitate maybe he didn't even change his voice but he was able to trick the kid into coming over here um and then he's fully turned into mcleod at the airport and picks up his son from the airport with the same clothes even 
like very yeah, accurate plus that he's wearing because <laughs> mcleod is like trying to come there and uh, stop this from happening because he finds out um yeah so he yeah kane has successfully kidnapped mcleod's son at this point yeah. Um, and then and we get another crazy driving was, scene, which is I was laughing like, so hard in this. Yeah, it's like one of the tentpole things for this franchise is the bad guy gets to kidnap someone and drive around like a lunatic, because uh, that certainly yeah. happens in this movie, and is it has in the last two as well. Um, yeah, the the last one, number two. Well, the first one's a great scene. Uh, number two, though. Uh, is the train, right? He takes the train and just speeds it yeah. to like 500 miles an hour for no reason. <laughs> exactly. And this one is like a complete ripoff of the first movie where he's doing like the covered eyes and driving between trucks and stuff like that and making it very scary for the passenger. Except He pulls the, he pulls the steering wheel off at one point. Well, yeah, this is all illusion stuff. He's doing all sorts of illusion things where like they drive into the plane, but the plane disappears. The cars disappear. He drives into a wall like mm-hmm. through a wall yeah and he pulls the steering wheel off and just isn't even driving it but i think these are all like illusions um yeah i don't know yeah it's insane but uh, uh <clears throat> john is really a bad actor at one point when when he gets in the car john is john sucks <laughs> um and it's a yeah. really dumb plot as well like to save this kid you do not care about like who is this kid even? Um, it's John. When, when he gets in the hey, car, the John. kid says, "Who are you? Who are you?" <laughs> oh God, yeah. And he says, "I'm a friend of your daddy's." Um. Anyway, so th- that scene is insane. He says, "What's that? A wall?" And drives into the wall. Keep your eye on the road. Some good lines during this scene. Agreed. Um, and then, okay, yeah, that whole scene happens. What happens next, Chris? Uh, then we get a voice memo sent from Kane to Highlander, just kind of basically saying, I kidnapped your kid. You got to come here to find him. And he gives him another address in New Jersey of, uh, what even was that place? It's like a Union Gospel Mission or like a food bank or something. Where they show um, where they go to, where they fight where out. they meet up, yeah, with the cross on the outside, that neon cross, yeah, some kind of I just thought it was a church, I guess I didn't maybe a church might yeah, there's um, a Jesus statue that he like goes into, he turns into the Jesus statue at one point, okay, um, <laughs> yeah, so they go to that place, um, and uh w- yeah, what else happens in there? I didn't take many notes on the church. I don't even know. They, they probably he can't says, fight there because it's holy ground, right? He says he says something about his immortal pecker. Um, I just wrote immortal pecker down. Um, yeah, they can't fight on holy ground again. I don't know. I, it's just like, let's just meet up and have a pre-fight talk. Yeah. Uh, classic Highlander moment. Kind of set um, up the final, the final showdown. I think in this scene, yeah, he like turns into the Jesus statue or like goes into it or something. And then there's some like flying head chopping device with blades. It's like a flying bladed drone. Do you remember that? Just kind of showed up randomly for a second. I don't know if I do remember that. I'll need to rewatch that part. Yeah, I don't know. But, um,. Yeah, then I think it's the final showdown time. Um, the girl mm-hmm. shows up here randomly. I'm like, she just shows up again out of nowhere. Um, turns out he was... Highlander is onto it, and he realizes that it's not actually the girl. It's Kane pretending to be the girl, so he stabs her. Um, also in this scene, Kane turns into a bridge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah that uh, happened <laughs> <laughs> he's like walking along this bridge or like scaffold or whatever it is and it just like disappears and this is where we see the the reappearance of the giant fans because the highlander almost falls <laughs> down into these two enormous fans that are blowing air up blowing air down it's not a normal way you point a fan um <laughs> i don't know i miss it <laughs> yeah and that uh that was where uh 
I, from my recollection, that was where uh, McLeod kind of recognized that Alex was a fake, and they, you know, she like helps him up, and they stab each other and stuff. Um, also, there was a part in this fight scene where Kane gets chopped in half, like his legs get cut off. <laughs> yeah, and then he just puts himself back together, like everything's cool. I, that part was kind of baffling. It to was. Me, but... It was very cartoony. Yeah, it cuts him in half, yeah. and like his second, his top half, like uses the the railing to like move backwards and like reconnects On... to the bottom half. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it's a more illusion. Heels right back up and then keeps fighting, you know, running around on these recently, you know, uh, severed limbs. Yep. Um, and that's it about all. Like, just an fight. illusion. You got anything else? Yeah, oh, it was an illusion. Maybe it was. Well, just you know, the final. It's kind of another anticlimactic moment, but he chops his head off. You yep. know, McLeod wins. Um, the the final quickening happens. It's a massive quickening. Um, it's pretty big. It felt like a lot of the budget went into this last fight scene. Yeah, just lots of explosions, and um, he's kind of levitating. John's okay, saves the day. Um, I bet, you know what I bet? I bet John went and signed another headshot for his dad as a thank you for saving his life. What do you think? Thanks, I think so. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Thanks for saving me, Dad. Love, John. Love, John. Um, Don't abandon yeah. me. <laughs> and then the movie ends with McLeod retiring uh, with his new love of his life and his, uh, his son, John, to Scotland. And that's where he plans to say. But he, then there's a little bit of like quickening lightning that hits yeah. the, the, the McLeod sword. That's kind of like an image that they come back to over and over in these movies. It's like um, it's, he's like, it's finally over. And then a yeah. shot of lightning hits the grave and the sword. And it's like. You know, it's not over. Or is it? Or is it? It's, yeah, yeah, where is it? Yeah. Um, he does. He lights a, a candle for his dead lover from the first movie, where she says, yep. "Light a candle on my birthday." So he's still doing that. Um, just you know, just to reemphasize how much of a lover he is. He's a lover uh, and a fighter. He's a lover of big bosom blonde. Mm-hmm. We know that, and that's the movie. That's it. Highlander 3, The Sorcerer Dimension. The Dimension of Sorcerer. Final Mm -hmm. Sorcerer. Well, Chris. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, man. How'd you feel about this movie? Do you have any MVPs um, or do you have any beef? Man, let let me think. I don't know if I have MVPs or beef. Um, I like this one better than the last one because I could follow the plot. Um... But it was also more like TV movie than the last one. And the last one for as like poorly put together as it was, was insane. Like it was, yeah. it was so entertaining because of the baffling things they were doing. And like the, just the whole thing was crazy. And this one was much more subdued. Um, but yeah, let's see. MVPs. I thought, I thought Kane was a, was a worthy adversary in this movie. I liked mm-hmm. him I think better than the villain in the last one. And um, the idea that there was another immortal that was like locked away and escaped, I think was a good, was a good setup for this movie. Um, I mean, I think we've hit the beef, the girl, her whole thing, like she's a scientist, but she also looks like someone he used to know. She travels all over the world. She has a CD ROM about Scottish history and Japanese metal. <laughs> and like her, like it seemed like anytime they had a plot hole that they needed to cover up, they just added something to her character to like yeah. <laughs> fill in the void, you know? And it's like, he didn't make any fucking sense to me. So I think that's my beef is her. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll give, I'll, I'll give the, well, I mean, Mario Van Peebles, what is the, 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 the initials there are MVP. So that's, that's my, oh. that's my for this one. Yeah, baby. Wow. That's great. <laughs> Yeah. How about Perfect. you? Oh, well, um, okay. So while I think that this movie, it, it writes the ship as far as a franchise or like how the, the franchise should go and for fans and like story-wise, um, overarching is like, it's better. You know what I mean? Yes. It, like, without a it's doubt. more, it's more, it's easier to follow. Um, 
And yeah, they, they write a lot of the plot points that they just fucked up in the second one. That being said, like you said, the second movie was insane and super fun to watch. And this movie is a fucking bore. I <laughs> Nothing happens in this movie that's exciting. The fights aren't very good. Myra Van Peebles, I do like. You're right. I, I give him an MVP as well, just because that's his initials. But also because he's he's pretty dece. Um, he's pretty dece, yeah. But none of the fight scenes are that good or interesting. No, there's no style choices that I really enjoyed. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's like it's such a tame, like, let's fix this, but not – and not we don't want to do anything too much. You know what I mean? I don't. We don't want to, like – change or do anything new or exciting because we want to make sure to write this this ship somehow um and it's just a little bit safe and and dull and i think Um, that was one of the things we both liked about the first movie is it felt like they were taking pretty big swings with a lot of the cinematography it it didn't feel like a movie that was playing it very safe but i totally agree on that that movie just like there's nothing else like it and still they can't Mm -hmm. they can't quite recreate it from what i've seen so yeah, the the beef is just everything. Um, I just like how boring it was, I guess. And MVP, yeah, but I guess Mario Van Peebles, yeah, why not? <laughs> sure, he's he's a good bad guy. Yeah, yeah, he's he was good. He definitely. Uh, all the movies have had pretty good bad guys, I will say. I'll give you that. Um, even yeah, the yeah. second one, second one was just so batshit crazy, and like in a bad movie sense, was like <laughs> fun and ridiculous to watch so i enjoyed my experience a lot more than watching this one um and not that i was like i didn't hate watching this movie necessarily but um uh, it's just it's kind of dull yeah right? it's kind of dull i'm right there with you yeah yeah um anyways let's see this movie how did this movie do it made 34 million back on a 34 million dollar budget or so so pretty Ooh, much broke even. Broke maybe even. broke even yeah you know I, from what i was seeing that sometimes like the advertising costs cost more so it probably lost well maybe with video sales it made more i don't know but it did okay um i think it's the most successful one of the three movies that we watched um, I also noticed this one uh, had a big like splash screen at the beginning for Miramax. Did you notice that when you were watching it? I I missed it. Yeah, like this was produced by at least produced or distributed something by Miramax, and that like it did not dim- feel like it a was, Miramax movie to me. Yeah, it was Dimension. I saw Dimension Films as well, which used to do a lot of horror movies. Okay, um, and maybe that's why they called it the Final Dimension because it was put out by <laughs> Dimension Films. Yeah, uh, maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. Maybe. Um, yeah. What else can we say about this movie, Chris? Does uh, it deserve more? Does it deserve another sequel? I I mean, we talked a minute before. You were just saying like you felt like they worked really hard to write the ship with this one. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, I feel like it. you could keep going with this. Again, I just wish that they had made that woman immortal and had made her more of a character and less of a, like, plot band-aid. And then you could have killed her at the start of the next movie, and then it was a vengeance movie. That would have been so much fun to watch to make him the, the, hunter, the hunter for once instead of the hunted. Um, oh, definitely. But uh, Great ideas. Yeah. Well, who knows? Maybe that maybe that is what's going to happen. Maybe he's, that's what they do. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't seen these things. So. He's in the next movie, um, so we'll we'll see. Um, what 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 do you think? What does this one deserve sequels? Well, back on track. I don't know. I mean, it's like I said, it's back on track, but not in an entertaining way for me. I like. I still think the franchise and I, I, overall the franchise and the the theme and the idea of it has a lot of potential. Um, yeah. You could do a lot more to it. I just feel like it needs to have somebody with more care and more, more life behind it. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Yeah. I think it's a lightning in a bottle situation. The first one, maybe it's like a, a point break. You can't remake point break. Cause it's just, it just works somehow. 
Um, and that might be the situation with Highlander. It's just like. For me, yeah. that's how it feels through three movies. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. And um, another movie with uh, John McGinley, who was in the last Highlander movie, too. Which what movie is? Uh, Point Break. He's the. Oh, Point Break. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> he's in that one too. Um, the the scrubs yeah, I don't guy. Know. Yeah. Um, I did. I did not have any milk this week. Did you? Uh, did you have anything? Or uh, should yeah. we check back in next week after Highlander Four? Uh yeah. No, I've got. I got milk for sure. Um, really? Um, yeah. So not a whole lot, but I did watch. This portion of the show, we like to like take a peek at some of the other ways that they use the franchise IP, uh, video games, books, graphic novels, board games, anything like that is fair game for the milk. Um, yeah. And what, so what did you take a peek at this week? I just watched an episode of the Highlander animated series. Um, oh, there's an animated series? Yeah, it's very much for kids. I, I didn't like it, really, but... Uh, <laughs> Came out the same year as this movie, and it's kind of okay. So it's set in twenty seven hundred A.D. Um, so at some point in this in this world of the animated show, it's like there's some kind of nuclear war on Earth, or like something post apocalyptic happens, and all the immortals are like the only people left. Maybe some other survivors here and there, but um, they all band together and decide to not kill anyone and to preserve life and rebuild the world or something, except for one guy um, who says fuck that and wants to be the the only immortal still. So this guy um, is the bad guy of the, of the cartoon, and... They're called like the the jetters. That's what they call them. J e t t i t e r s. Uh, that's what they call the group of immortals. Um, and then it flashes forward to like twenty seven hundred, and there's another Scottish clan um, with a kid named Duncan McLeod or Quentin McLeod this time. Okay. Um, and there's some prophecy that he will rise up and kill this this immortal that wants to take over the world. Yeah, anyway, so that's pretty much it. It's very kiddy. Can I ask a clarifying question? Yeah. Are so this is a kids show. I'm assuming yeah. no bush. And maybe no that's bush. wrong of me to assume. Um but are they still are they still decapitating people? Cuz that feels like a pretty central part of this this franchise. Yeah, I mean it's an adulty kids thing and there are some decapitations from what I I don't know if there was one in this episode. Like the bad guy decapitates, but actually the the main kid um somehow they work in some kind of nonviolent way of quickening people so he steals their power without chopping off heads so got yes, you okay it did change that but apparently they the bad guy still chops people's heads off in the show okay so okay. cool yeah um there's like a question. new a new mentor he's a, his name is McLeod again and it's very it's poorly written from what I saw this episode. It's just and the kid <laughs> voice acting is really bad. Um and like the lines are terrible. But there's like a new Ramirez guy. He's got like four Spanish names and his last name is Ramirez. So they just kind of tried to copy it. And I don't think there's any real relation to the other McLeod or Ramirez. Um okay. But that's like his new trainer. And then it's it's just it's an I don't know. It's a little bit crazy. It's not that good. I'm definitely not going to watch anymore. The Highlander TV show is definitely way better. Um, and uh, yeah, the kid just like knocks people out with his sword instead of chopping. So he's got, he's always got a sword, but he doesn't actually kill anyone with it. Um, and let's see. What's the other thing? Oh, okay. So I played, I didn't play a game, but I was trying to find one of the other Highlander games. Um, and it's apparently based, the only other game is based on the animated show. Um, and it's called The Last of the McClouds. And I watched like somebody play it for about 20 minutes and kind of skipped around. Because I, I couldn't get it on the emulator I was looking up and it didn't work. Because yeah. um, it's for like 
Atari Jaguar or something. Um, and never even heard it, of that system. It's oh man, well, the system was a big failure. I got to show you the the controller for the Atari Jaguar. Please. This is great content for a, for an audio medium. Oh my! Yeah, this controller is like. <laughs> so let me describe this. Let me describe this to the listeners because theoretically this is a podcast. Uh, it's a it's a, 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 a zero through nine keypad like you'd find on an, on a phone, and there's an A B C button. This is a weird controller, and then a and then a D pad on the left hand. What yeah, do you use the numbers? For? Massive. It's exactly. Huge, yeah. I don't know. Apparently, like you didn't use them in like hardly any games. Um, well, and yeah, it was like one of the reasons this system failed. I think it's <laughs> <you're massive>. kidding. <laughs> yeah, I guess you could like practice running a, like a like I a cash could... machine. <laughs> yeah, you know, typing in numbers. only for specific games with cash machines. <laughs> okay, um, yeah. I think it's supposed to be like you can assign them values or, or something. So maybe like uh, equip sword by pressing one or something like that. Like. It'd be a good way to do items if you because you could have yeah a bunch of yeah like in a on a keyboard on a computer like if you have you can assign you know like different weapons in like an RPG to different mm-hmm. you press one and you switch to your sword you press two you switch to your mace something like that so maybe that's the idea behind it but it's a anyway it's a crazy controller um, and this game is it's the worst thing I've ever seen it's worse than I, I can't is, even describe it. You just got to look it up. Look up the last of, of the McClouds. And okay. it's basically, it's the entire game is based off this first episode of the animated of show. The kids TV show? The entire game is based on this episode. Yeah. Oh, and I, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, that's that's the game. That's the only other game in the franchise unfortunately there was one in 2010 they were trying to make like a full-on thing and i think they had like a like a full-on like playstation 3 game and i think there was a trailer and everything like they had gotten pretty far into development and then it was canceled um hmm. yeah that could that's have been kind of a bummer because cool. this i think this would lend itself really well to a video game yeah, one you know, day. You can, like travel travel through time and you fight dudes like it really seems like a like a slam dunk video game. Chopping heads off. Yeah, and you like yeah. you absorb their power and each guy right, has like you get like, stronger with each one you kill. Like yeah, it's literally you get your upgrade. Games. You get your yeah. upgrades every time. Like you yep. get illusion spells maybe for killing the sorcerer. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. Anyway, that's that's the milk I have, the animated show and that video game. I love the last it. of the McClouds. The the video I saw was just this it was somebody playing the, the NPC and they kept entering this little hut and exiting the hut and getting hit every time they entered. And for like twenty minutes they were doing this and I kept like <laughs> skipping ahead. And it just was just abysmal. Yeah. Um anyways. That's all I got. I love it. Um, so next well, week. Thanks for listening. Yeah, next week, uh, make sure you fill out the survey. Um, We'll read your answers at the top of the show. Um, And what are we talking about next week, Tanner? Highlander Endgame. So this has got the uh, Chris Lambert and the Highlander from the TV show. So I will say, just plop on an episode of that TV show this week. Make sure you watch that. Um, It's super easy breezy. Um, you know, oh, I'll be plop plopping on as, sure. you're, as you're as you're on the toilet or whatever. Plop while you plop. Um, <laughs> and I'll plop you know, till I drop, Tanner. Plop till you drop. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll cover that next week. Should be fun. Um, I know it's one of the worst movies ever made. So, no, I, don't, I don't know. That's what they said about Highlander too, and. So far, it was my second favorite Highlander. I agree. Um, I think it was more. It was more fun to watch than this one, but it, this one was definitely more professional. Definitely more. Made. Oh, here, yeah. yeah. Um, anything else you want to talk about? I don't think so. That's Alrighty. all I got for Highlander Three. 
Highlander 3 the Sorcerer. Take the survey Let's... and we'll read it on air. See you next we'll week. We'll see you in the next dimension. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right, bye. All right, bye.